Flying is like breathing for this company. They've done it for so long, they don't know the difference. It's not, it's not ruling my life. I mean, I don't think about it while I'm out to dinner or while I'm sleeping or whatever. They've got people tracking his private jet. You know, where's he going now? Where is he going now? And this is not a way to lead a healthy, balanced lifestyle, but it might be a way to get an edge on your big bet on Wall Street. Elon Musk is, is the most untrustworthy, pathologically lying, large cap CEO I think I've ever seen. Elon Musk is a fake engineer and a fake scientist and a fake prophet and a fake visionary. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Boy, do I have a treat for you guys and girls today. We're gonna to look at some of the thoughts and opinions of Tesla Q, the geniuses who collectively have lost in 2020 alone over $10 billion shorting Tesla stock. I think this video will be a great way to gain some insights into how people can misunderstand, misinterpret, and just be completely plain fucking wrong regarding their thesis around a stock. Now, just a quick warning, if you're a snowflake, you will melt during the course of this video. And if you're from Tesla Q, if you're short Tesla stock, I highly encourage you to stick around. Even if your butt starts to hurt a little bit when I make a few comments, you get a little bit enraged, a little bit pissed, a little bit upset, a little bit emotional, a little bit angry. That's a sign that what I'm saying might be important. And let me be super clear. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make people think. I'm here to make a point. I'm coming from a place of kindness, compassion, and empathy. I really do not want to see people losing tens upon tens of billions of dollars, throwing money at a company they think is a great short that's headed for bankruptcy, that's run by a fraudulent, dishonest CEO, when they're clearly barking up the wrong tree. So grab some popcorn, get comfortable, and let's get into the video. But first, don't forget if you'd like three free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble, sign up, open a new account, deposit $100, you'll get three free stocks. Two of them value between $8 and $1,600 each. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake, also using a link in the description. Let's get back to it. And guys, this is just my style, my personality. I don't know how to do this any other way. I'm not one to coddle, I'm not one to sugarcoat or blow smoke up anyone's ass. So you may need to keep your daddy nearby for comfort, for hugs, etc., or at least a teddy bear, something along those lines. It's not gonna be gentle but it needs to be said. The clips in this video are all from an early 2019 documentary, about 19, 20 months old as I'm recording this. There's a link in the description to the full video and I highly recommend you guys check it out. So let's get into it. I've been called obsessed with this by a lot of people. I don't usually talk stocks around the apartment because it drives my girlfriend crazy. I especially don't talk Tesla. And by the way, it's not, it's not ruling my life. I mean, I don't think about it while I'm out to dinner or while I'm sleeping or whatever. Now, the armchair psychologist in me does kind of get a feeling that maybe in fact, Mark is trying to overcompensate for his actual Tesla obsession. But of course, I could be completely deluded. After all, I am actually obsessed with Tesla and spend all of my waking hours trying to understand the company better and to see how they're progressing toward their mission. In fact, I'm fast approaching 4,000 Tesla related tweets. That's insane. I mean, Mark's only tweeted about Tesla about, oh, uh, hmm, that's awkward. Uh, about 10,000 more times than I have. I, I don't have a drinking problem. I just, I just like to drink every single day, starting at 3 p.m. until midnight. But, but, I, but, I don't, but I'm not an alcoholic. Um, but none of us can believe what's so obvious and out there in plain sight is, is being improperly priced by the markets. Number one, um, it has nothing meaningfully proprietary in terms of technology. <laughs> Dude, I do not know where to start with this one. I mean, even the most deluded of Tesla short sellers accept that they do have incredible proprietary technology. This is why they're achieving greater range with their vehicles than anyone else. Why they're manufacturing their EVs more profitably than anyone else. Why their vehicles are safer than anyone else. Why software makes up such a huge component of Tesla's automotive margins. Why Tesla is able to build and construct factories in record times. Tesla's pioneering and innovating new forms of manufacturing. Tesla is developing its own alloys. Tesla has developed its own full self-driving data chip. Like I could keep going on for about 45 minutes. This is just complete and utter delusion. I shouldn't even be wasting my breath addressing this. This is a pretty clear tell about how deluded Mark Spiegel is about Tesla. Now again, this isn't personal. I'm not coming from an emotional place. But the guy is living in delusion. This is a man who is 
diluted. Number two, it loses a lot of money. It's lost all this money before the real competition is coming. Oh yes, the competition is coming and Tesla can't make a profit. They're losing money. Now, in fairness to Mark, this was shot 15, 18, 24 months ago, somewhere in that range. At that point in time, Tesla hadn't posted five consecutive quarterly profits. But this posting of five consecutive quarterly profits hasn't come as a surprise to people who understood the business. And that is, Tesla, while bringing in billions of dollars of revenue, billions of dollars of cash flow, are making the decision, well, we could please the numbnuts on Wall Street who are looking for a profit after three quarters in this business that's gonna transform the world over the next three, four decades, or we could take that money, we could invest that money in new factories and new equipment and new manufacturing techniques and research and development and accelerate our mission and reach larger scale of production. What should we do? Should we go for scale and bringing our costs down or should we please the numbnuts on Wall Street? Obviously, we know that Tesla's been investing in growth and scale. They're now producing around half a million vehicles per year. Next year, it'll be closer to one million vehicles per year. This thesis now is completely dead in the water. The idea that the competition is coming, we've seen it arrive. The competition is coming all over itself. Nobody's buying these vehicles. I mean, no offense to the e-tron and the i-pace and the i-suck and the shitball and whatever else they're all called, but nothing is capable of competing with Tesla at this point in time. They're a laughing stock. They're making no money on these vehicles when they sell them and nobody's buying them. As for profitability, Tesla has now demonstrated what was kind of obvious to anybody who really looked at the business before they were making their profits that they would come in the future. This is called investing. Investing, yeah, I fancy that. We're talking about investing. It's getting so meta. Tesla was investing in the future. They're investing capital today to make future profits, which we're now seeing. This was kind of obvious. You could look at the numbers and think about the scale and go, oh, okay, yep. Cool, but unfortunately, I think a lot of the Tesla short sellers were living in such delusion and confirmation bias, they couldn't see past the next quarter, next month, tomorrow. No long-term vision, no vision at all, in fact. I think that's where a lot of Tesla shorts have really messed the bed. Why are we out doing practical research? Because we can't get the truth about this company. Lying is like breathing for this company. They've done it for so long, they don't know the difference. When I hear these types of statements from Tesla short sellers, I really do question if their mental health is in check and if they're not suffering from some form, like a serious mental illness. And I'm not saying this to be a dick. I'm not, this is not me like having a savage burn on these guys. I actually mean it. I haven't seen any evidence whatsoever of Tesla or Elon Musk being dishonest, deceptive, or misleading people, period. Where is this evidence? Where are these guys coming up with the idea that they're pathological liars, that they're dishonest, that they misrep? I don't understand. Like I literally, there's no evidence of this anywhere. Please, in the comments, somebody present something to me. The only thing you can fault Tesla or Elon Musk on is for predicting timelines for products, releases, these kind of things. But of course, they intrinsically carry with them uncertainty because you're not there yet. So you're making a prediction about the future. You may not get the timing right, but that's irrelevant. There isn't any evidence whatsoever, none I have seen of Tesla or Elon Musk intentionally deceiving, lying or misleading people, period. Now, we hear this repeatedly from Tesla Q. Why is that? Are these guys completely deluded? Are they living with some kind of mental illness? And again, I'm not trying to be a dick, I'm just, I'm asking the questions because I do not understand how you can misunderstand a company or the CEO so profoundly. Where do they come up with this idea that Tesla or Elon are dishonest? I do not know. I've searched for reasonable, quantifiable, bullish arguments to support the value of Tesla equity exhaustively, and I have not found one. and the lack of it over time um, only hardens one's views. Yeah, bro, I'm with you on this one, man. I've been looking for the G-spot for 20 years, still can't find it, doesn't exist. I have no concerns about Tesla's viability. Tesla is delighting the consumer. Uh, this is a replay of Amazon. I lived through Amazon through its ups and downs, years where they weren't earning money and questions about viability, meaning the, the traditional retailers were gonna kill Amazon. Uh, if, if you were looking through the lens of disruptive innovation, you knew that wasn't true. Well, speaking of not understanding Amazon, 
Our friend Mark Spiegel tweeted this in early 2015. I think Amazon is the second most overvalued mega cap after Tesla and that it's finally time to short it. So I am. I wonder how Amazon stock performed after Mark initiated his short position. Oh, good call Mark. Amazon stock only up about 700% since you decided to short the company. Good track record. Tesla has 80% share of the electric vehicle market in the United States. It's in the top five selling of all cars, gas powered or electric. The consumer is speaking very loudly here. La, 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 the competition is coming, the competition is coming, the competition is coming, la, 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 la. They were even forced to build a giant tent the size of two football fields at their factory in Fremont, California, to use as a third production line, raising questions on quality for Tesla Q. The tent was my aha moment. Yeah, that was the moment when I realized we were not dealing with a serious company. We were dealing with a desperate individual uh, who had set performance metrics that he couldn't meet and was now in a situation that he couldn't completely control. I truly find it incredible that the same data can be interpreted so differently. Tesla Q, oh, Tesla doesn't know what they're doing. They're incompetent, they're hopeless. Meanwhile, I see the tent go up in record time, become a new model for how they build production lines in the future and think to myself, wow, those Tesla engineers are very resourceful. They're very smart. They managed to solve an enormous problem incredibly quickly and now they have a model to replicate in the future for building factories in record time and producing vehicles even more efficiently. Wow, that's impressive. I wonder what other problems those smart engineers will be able to solve in record time in the future. Meanwhile, the Tesla short seller interprets this as incompetence, incapability, desperation, etc. Amazing, isn't it? Today's magic word is infer. They've got people tracking his private jet. You know, where's he going now? Where's he going now? And this is not a way to lead a healthy, balanced lifestyle, but it might be a way to get an edge on your big bet on Wall Street. I agree completely with Charlie here. I actually think that obsession is a great way to get an edge in investing. However, obsession, colored by delusion, not so much. The unveiling of Tesla's newest Model Y is met with questions about where and how it will be made. The Model Y. Yeah. There's nothing. They don't have a factory to build the Model Y in. They don't have enough money to develop it or buy the equipment for it. Poor Montana Septic. I feel so sorry for the guy. I think, again, his bias towards this company, his misunderstanding just didn't enable him to see the facts before his very eyes. Let me explain. When Tesla unveiled the Model Y, they also told us that it shares three quarters of its parts in common with the Model 3. If we use that word of the day and infer... We can infer that if this new vehicle is using three quarters of the same parts in common, then in theory, Tesla already has around three quarters of the necessary equipment to build the product for the Model 3, which they can also use for the Model Y, not requiring those billions of dollars of investment. Again, with such intense bias and delusion, it's really hard to actually infer reality based on the available evidence. You infer further delusion because you're not seeing clearly. I feel bad for this guy. He's trying his best. The comments would have made sense in the absence of Tesla being very clear that these vehicles shared three quarters of their parts in common. We saw how quickly the Model Y ramped. It was revealed and then released about nine months later. They ramped the fucking product in less than a year and are profitably delivering them already. Model Y is an absolute killer. It's highly profitable. They're selling like hotcakes and Tesla spent hardly a cent ramping up production as their financial results have shown. They need billions of dollars right now. At some point, even the stupidest investors wake up and stop pouring money down a rat hole. Hot, kettle, black. At some point, even the stupidest investors wake up and stop pouring money down a rat hole. At some point, even the stupidest investors wake up. At some point, even the stupidest investors wake up. If you weren't already suspicious of Musk before the Solar City acquisition, that should have been all the evidence you needed that he will act in his own best interests and no one else's interests, because that was indefensibly uh, harmful to Tesla. Here we see somebody falling into the trap of thinking a little bit, but once it starts to hurt, they stop thinking because it's painful. You see, on the surface of it, the Solar City acquisition by Tesla looks terrible. Solar City wasn't making a huge amount of money, they weren't highly profitable. Terrible business, terrible business. Never mind the future, never mind the vertical integration, never mind the ability for Tesla to upsell and cross sell products, never mind any of that whatsoever. Terrible, terrible business. Here's an analogy. Imagine if Amazon acquired Tesla in 2019. 
We would have heard the same comments from the same deluded people who thought Tesla was unprofitable, a terrible business headed for bankruptcy. We'd hear the exact same comments about the acquisition because the people making these comments don't have the capacity or the will or the desire to infer and think, hang on a minute, is it possible that they're investing in scaling and driving their costs down and developing their technology and in the future the profits will come? Is it also possible that this entire industry is about to explode and go from a spec to enormous? Go from generating a tiny bit of the world's energy to the vast majority of the world's energy. Is that possible? Oh no, I'm not going to think that much. It hurts too much. Terrible, terrible investment decision. Terrible. Elon Musk is, is the most untrustworthy, pathologically lying large cap CEO I think I've ever seen. Now, was it Freud who smoked a pipe or so? I don't know. Anyway, time to put on my armchair psychologist hat and share some of my thoughts, opinions, and pure speculation regarding Mark Spiegel, his personality, and what's really driving him as a person. Now, Mark, I promise I haven't broken into your psychologist files and stolen all of your patient notes. This is pure speculation, but this is my genuine feeling, my impression. I suspect that Mark in his childhood didn't have a father figure. Or at the very least, if he did have a father figure in his life, it wasn't a great one. Violent, abusive, alcoholic, those type of things. Pure speculation. But I've been around the block enough to notice patterns. And I also suspect that Mark's greatest human need is that of significance. Now, some people achieve significance by winning awards, being very competitive, succeeding in life, building a successful business, having a great family, whatever they feel a lot of pride in. Another way to gain significance, for example, would be to pull a gun on somebody because at that very moment, you literally become the most significant thing in their life. I think that Mark has such a need for significance that he's willing to say things that are completely absurd and attack and try to bring other people down so he gets that much needed sense of significance because that's going to make it feel like he's worthy of love. Of course, this is all unfounded speculation and nothing more. I'm just sharing my thoughts and thinking out loud, but I genuinely do believe that I'm on the right path with Mark. I think the guy's crying out for help, he's hurting a lot, he's in a lot of pain, and one of the ways that he's kind of getting the attention of people and saying, help, I'm in pain, I'm hurting, I need something's wrong, I'm broke, like help, please help me, is to go after Elon Musk and other people to say outrageous and ridiculous and provocative things to stir up shit. I think that kind of gets him that feeling, oh yes, I'm worthy of love, significant, I matter, I matter. <laughs> Why didn't you love me, daddy? Elon Musk is a fake engineer and a fake scientist and a fake prophet and a fake visionary. Do these sound like reasonable or emotional comments? Now, Elon Musk has a degree in physics, like he actually has a degree in physics. He's a pretty competent engineer. Talk to anyone who's worked for Elon Musk who is an engineer and you'll understand the kind of conversations they have and the understanding that Elon has. There's been many times in the past where Elon has had an employee who wasn't able to do something and Elon's got so pissed up and fed off that he sat down, kicked them off the job and did it himself, whether it was software engineering or something else. He's a pretty bright guy. We've seen enough evidence of that from his track record in business, his accomplishments in life. It isn't something you can reasonably say to doubt Elon Musk's competence as an engineer. Now these comments to me sound like they're coming from somebody who has intense inferiority complex or something along those lines. Perhaps somebody that's still living in their mum's basement or has never touched a female of the same species. I could be totally off the mark. Again, I'm just asking the question out loud. Do these comments sound like somebody coming from a place of reason or emotion? just asking the question. Elon Musk is a fake engineer and a fake scientist and a fake prophet and a fake visionary. Do your own research and of course draw your own conclusions or say, look, still inconclusive, I don't know really what's going on here. That's okay. But do these really sound like reasonable comments? The reason I'm asking this question is to build up a picture. Here's a little bit of a hint. The impression that I tend to get so far from the people, generally speaking, who are shorting Tesla stock isn't that they don't believe in the business. It's that they have something personal that's interfering with their ability to assess Tesla relating to its CEO, Elon Musk. There's some dynamic between the way they feel about themselves when they see Elon Musk and what they think about Tesla and its viability as a company, as an investment. That is why they're shorting the stock, in my opinion. This is pure speculation, but unless we really know these people from the inside of their own mind, which is not possible, we'll never truly know. I'm just trying to give a little bit of insight and understanding into how people make major investment mistakes, in my opinion. Elon Musk is a fake engineer and a fake scientist and a fake prophet and a fake visionary. He's our Thomas Edison. He's, he's brilliant. He's an innovator, an inventor, um, a renaissance man in many ways. I mean, there's, I think that pe people can't relate to him 
because there are not many people like him. I think Kathy Wood is really onto something here. As somebody who is clearly not a normal human being, I can relate to being often misunderstood by other people. I totally get it, I'm not saying this is good or bad, it's just a fact of life. When you don't think and act like other people, oftentimes you'll be misunderstood and misinterpreted. I'm willing to bet that there aren't too many people who are shorting Tesla stock who haven't simultaneously completely misread Elon Musk. Again, this is pure speculation, but I'm willing to put that on record. I think there's a correlation there, quite a strong one. We really do perform a function that smooths out the excesses of the market. But, you know, it, it, it's like if, if your best friend, you know, is in love with a woman, is going to marry her, he doesn't want to hear that, you know, there's something wrong with her, that, you know, hey, she was a, a high-priced call girl before, you know, you fell in love with her. He doesn't want to hear that. And that's the kind of the way it is with, with people who are long stocks. They don't want to hear their stock was a was a hooker. The irony here, the cognitive dissonance is just incredible. Don't you just want to hold up a mirror for Mark so that he can see? Oh, the poor guy. I mean, Mark, just imagine if you're in love with this investment thesis that Tesla's a fraud and, and you're the one who doesn't want to hear it. I mean, I'm doing my best here. This video is probably going on 25, 30 minutes long. Just trying to help a few people who think Tesla's a really bad company who are shorting the stock, very bearish, just to think and consider. The people they've been listening to, the thinking and the reasoning, does it check out? I'm, I'm trying, Mark. I don't know what to say, dude. Like, mirror, just just have a quick glance. Just just consider. Just consider the, the possibility, please. This Mark, uh, what's his name, uh, Spiegel guy, who's one of the most quoted short sellers, he barely has any money. I'm like, what? Why isn't there some rule that you can't really say crap if you don't actually manage real money? You know, and that's the joke of this whole thing. I'm the guy with $840 million on my computer buying and selling stocks for 5,000 people, okay? And these are guys sitting in their office with like $2 million of like grandma's money, you know, pretending that they're like real investors. Now, it's easy to laugh at these comments from Ross, but he actually has a very serious and important point. It's true. Mark Spiegel is managing a few million dollars. Chump change in comparison to somebody like Ross, who again is chump change compared to others out there. Now, this isn't to say that people with a small amount of investments, a small amount of assets can't share their thoughts and opinions. But if their track record is as spectacularly poor as standstill capital managed by Mark Spiegel, I mean, the guy shorted Amazon in 2015, great idea. Look at his returns, his letters. Usually it's like, well, our returns are really, 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 really bad. But that's because Tesla's a fraud and this will eventually be okay because Tesla's going to zero and we'll make all of our money. Sorry, we lost all your money again. Please don't leave the fund. Approximately, allegedly, do your own research, blah, fucking blah, blah, blah. I loathe the thought of still having to tweet about this stock in six months <laughs> or a year. I just, but I can't let it go because I'm a deep obsessive. That's an impressive level of honesty and self-awareness there from Tesla Shards. I can't let it go, I can't let it go, I can't let it go. They are the beneficiary of endless subsidies. They are the beneficiary of mandates that tie their competitors down like Gulliver among the Lilliputians. And that is what I find offensive. It's a horrible misallocation of capital. Is it just me or does Montana Septic appear to be very emotionally invested in this? I mean. He really, really, really is putting some feels into this one. It's not just talking from a business perspective. I wonder what would motivate him to be so passionately, viscerally disgusted by the fact that Tesla would have any access to any forms of subsidies whatsoever. Let me do some research. Tesla troll and short doxed as heavily invested in oil industry. Musk reportedly calls his boss. Hmm, this sounds salacious. One of Tesla's biggest anonymous trolls slash shorts has been doxxed as an investment manager heavily invested in the oil industry. Hmm, that's interesting. He has now deleted his Twitter account, which he used to promote his blog post about Tesla and attack anyone saying anything that could be perceived as positive on Tesla after Tesla CEO Elon Musk reportedly called his boss to complain about his behavior. We are talking about Montana Septic who has been using Seeking Alfalfa, a financial blog aggregator, and Twitter to push the bear case on Tesla for the past three years. Hiding behind his anonymous persona on social media, Montana Septic went beyond just pushing the bear case. He also used the platforms to send insults and attacks to Tesla bulls, bloggers, YouTubers, and reporters discussing anything that he saw as potentially being positive for Tesla, including myself on numerous occasions to the point where I had to block him. 
This is the author, Fred Lambert of Electric, sharing his experience interacting with Montana Septic. Given what we've just learned, I think that we can gain a little bit of insight into where the strong emotion in these comments from Montana Septic is actually coming from. The fact that Tezza is eating the lunch of and single-handedly, one by one, destroying his oil-heavy stock portfolio, allegedly. That is what I find offensive. It's a horrible misallocation of capital. The key element of the Tesla bull case and the Tesla bear case is the same thing. It's Elon Musk. Um, Elon Musk is willing to do anything to win is the bull case. And Elon Musk is willing to do anything to win is the bear case. Brilliant insight here from Tesla Schatz. I think he's hit the nail on the head. It really does come down to Elon Musk and people's perception. I believe that most of the people shorting Tesla stock at this point in time perceive Elon Musk in a negative light, whether they don't think he's capable or competent or honest, etc. I mean, whatever they want to project onto Elon, I really think that's what's happening. Whereas the people that are very bullish on Tesla stock really do believe in Elon Musk's capability to execute on their plans. And maybe, just I mean, maybe they've also just had a cursory glance at his track record. Oh, f yeah, he did all that shit. Wow, yeah, okay, cool. That's a pretty good sign. I mean, I'm purely speculating here, but I actually think that Tesla Schatz is really onto something here. Great and eloquent way of explaining the key distinction between Tesla bulls and Tesla bears. Now, of course, there will be exceptions to the rule. Some people purely just looking at the numbers, think they're analyzing an automotive company and think Tesla's garbage. But overall, I think he's really made an important point here. If Tesla does come crashing to earth, as I firmly believe it will, its demise will ripple through every asset market on earth. Can we get a little bit of a if I'm wrong, it may signal that much of what we thought we knew about business is now obsolete. I couldn't have said it better myself. What a great place to wrap this video up. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Even Tesla Q. But guys, seriously, just stop. I mean, please just try to see things from the other perspective. Just just try. You're, gonna, you're just going to keep losing money. You are just going to keep losing money. Don't forget if you'd like three free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. Sign up, open a new account, deposit $100, you'll get three free stocks. Two of them value between $8 and $1,600 each. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.